Hello everyone. Uh, a little bit late in the day, but uh, mm. building an academic venture collection is a particular approach. I'm sure. So the outline uh, acknowledgements, academic practices, approaches for event archiving, and the event model and the presentation, and how to build that model, some sample results, and uh, how to build uh, ingest that model in the Fox Scholar, and then what's the benefit for archiving. So uh, the story begins with the city of the digital library for the April 16 shooting in Virginia Tech. We uh, looked for started the uh, NSA fund building digital library for what happened there, collecting all the information. And then we extended uh, that with another uh, NSA funding project for uh, different kind of disaster events, not shooting only, shooting earthquakes, uh, flooding, fires. And then the sequel, uh, after that, the Integrated Digital Event Archive and Library, and this is the context of my work, uh, extending not disaster events, but community and government events. So uh, I would like to thank the copy eyes, Dr. Kevin, Dr. Sheets, Shoemaker, and my colleagues, essentially, and the Internet Archive people, Christian Hanna, for uh, hosting our archives and using the tools. So, during my literature review, the different kinds of archiving practices, uh, domain or site base, so librarians and state agencies uh, use the archiving tool to uh, archive certain website or uh, substructure of the website that are relevant for them. This is one kind of ar archiving. Uh, the crawler based archiving uh, or the other kind of archiving is topic based. So if you are interested in a certain topic, you will use the crawler to crawl the web pages that's related to this topic. And this is where the focus or the topical scholars come in. And then the, the very specific way is the event-based. So since an event is a, a specific instance of a topic or a special case of a topic, then event-based calling would be a special case of topical calling, where uh, in topical calling you need uh, anything related to an earthquake, since an earthquake is a topic. But in an event you need the Japan earthquake that happened in 2011. So a very specific case of topical calling. So uh, my work is related to event-based uh, one, and there are still different approaches for the event archiving. Okay, so the, the first approach is manual curation. So the, Librarians, if they need to archive an event, they go and manually curate a set of URLs and use the archive tool to archive these URLs. So the time they consume to curate these URLs is huge and time consuming. The other approach is social media based using Twitter or whatever social media environment. You go and build a or search using keyword or hashtag, get all the tweets and get the URLs with these tweets, and this would be uh, archive them, and this would be your archive about the event. Uh, the last approach is calling the web using a focus the caller, uh, adapted towards this event, and this is my approach, and I will show you the difference between this. Uh, the first approach is uh, time consuming, but once you get the, the uh, CDRLs, you have a high quality archive, very uh, highly curated, very relevant to the event, the, but time consuming. The social media based one, no time consumed, actually just you are using the, uh, the crowdsourcing, the, the wisdom of the crowd to get the URLs and then archive it. You didn't uh, spend much time, but you are sacrificing the quality of the archive. Uh, you are uh, trusting the crowd about the, these URLs. And it depends on the keyword or the hashtag that you use. So uh, this is the two extremes, and uh, hopefully the focus caller or the event focus caller will be in the middle, where uh, you prepare uh, the curate some seed URLs, small ones, and you feed it to the caller, and the caller, based on its model of the understanding of the event, it will call the web for to get more relevant web pages. So uh, you don't spend much time, and you get. Uh, approximately high quality archive out of it.
So, as I said, the Fox Cola aims to uh, keep the balance between the high quality event collections and uh, reducing the time needed to build this collection. So, I will. In the ideal project, the, the project I'm working in, we went through the three processes. We started with the archive tool for Internet Archive and manually curated URLs for different kinds of events. And we have around 16 collections, and then we uh, recognize that this is not the approach that we need to, uh, to archive events. And most of these are about the disaster events, bombing, earthquakes, hurricanes. Uh, and we, as I said, manual preparation of URLs and then archiving using the archiving tool. One characteristic of the archiving tool is uh, it's tailored around uh, libraries and state agencies where you want uh, a web site to be archived and archived every, every day. So it's a frequent archiving. You need different versions of the same website. Uh, but in our case, in event-based archiving, you have a huge set of URLs and you need to capture them just one time. Since there is no different, you are not expecting to get different content from uh, frequent archiving. So that's why we uh, shifted from this approach. These are samples of the archives that we had and archived. We have floods, uh, plane crash, earthquakes, shootings. It started with shootings and then extended to different kinds of uh, disasters. The second approach to using social media, we uh, explore the different ways for archiving tweets or grabbing tweets. We started with 142 uh, toolkit and then we went to uh, another toolkit called your Twapper Keeper where you feed it the, the keyword or the hashtag and then it will uh, use the Twitter search API to get all the tweets that has this keyword or hashtag. So across seven years we have uh, around one billion tweets for different kind of events. Uh, we extract the, the process, we extract the URLs from these tweets, unshorten them, feed it to the Hertrix, archive the web pages, and then feed the archive the work file into open way back so we can access it, and uh, extract the text from the work files and then feed it to Solar so you can search it. So this is uh, the easiest way for us to, uh, to get uh, archived about events, but eventually the, the, the archive that we have has a lot of noise, I'm using the, the servers for the university and the IT keeps every time shutting the, the server I'm using and there's malicious malware that's infecting all the IT stuff so I'm blacklisted there. <laughs> <laughs> These are the sample of the tweet collection that we have and uh, the starting date that we had from this. So here is your plane crash, we have our own. 174,000. Yeah, my data is bigger than your data. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ebola, I have been sending shooting um, folks. So, and these are the workflows get the tweet collections, extract the URLs, short, and shorten them, index them to uh, extract the web pages and the text from them, index them so to browse the search and browsing, and using the Hertrix archi archive it produce the work file and feed it to Wayback Machine. So the, and then this is my thesis, this edition work, how to keep the balance between these two approaches. So, uh, Focus the Color has been there since the 70s, uh, topical color, Focus the Color. So basically it starts from a seed URL, a selected set of URLs, and it, uh, using the target uh, representation of the topic that you want, a set of keywords or example web pages about the topic and the crawler uh, visits these web pages, extract the URLs from them and then put them in a queue and it has to determine the order of these URLs in the queue so it can prioritize where it visits the web graph. Uh, of course, uh, I call system is a very good example about that. The, the idea of topical crawler, it has a lot of disadvantages one of them is topical drift, so you don't uh, not know where the caller will go when a lot of uh, <coughs> keep it for a long time. Uh, it get, will get a lot of noise depending on the keywords that you are using. So we have to uh, represent an event since an event is not uh, a topic is very general for an event. So we need to be very specific about describing an event. 
So this gets us another problem is event modeling. How can you describe an event? And this is not an easy task. Uh, from the literature, we found that the DARPA, DARPA has a competition about uh, topic detection and tracking for news events or stories. And there's special edition from them about event organization. So they started that in the 90s, and uh, this is the beginning of formal uh, description of an event. And one of these descriptions is uh, something happened in a specific time, a specific location. So uh, this would be describing simple events because complex events are uh, across time and uh, across location. And the event would be have some sub-events, but this would be a starting point for describing events. So, as the previous talk was, uh, an event would be what happened, where and when, so what, where and when, and this would be the basic components of an event for me. Uh, the what happened would be using the vector space model or probabilistic model to get up what are the topics or the keywords that describe the, the thing that happened, and then using the actual language processing to the, extract the, the location and the dates to describe the where and the when part. Uh, we have used this event model the description in uh, two classes that Dr. Fox uh, uh, taught in uh, last fall and uh, this last spring. Uh, computational linguistics, so a group of uh, senior undergrad students uh, had a course. It's probabilistic based learning. We had a paper about that in the conference. So the, the problem for the students were here is a collection of uh, web pages about a certain event try to come up with a summary for this event using the, this event model. So they try to apply the different techniques for getting the, the frequent uh, keywords, the topics, and then the locations and the dates, and try to fill a template to get, come up with a summary for this uh, event. And then the information retrieval uh, course uh, using this uh, event collections to feed it into a solar and then how to enhance the ranking in solar. So in order to build this event model, uh, just the, the methodology for doing that is you have two ways, either get the whole text for all the collections and deal with it as just one big uh, document, and then try to extract the frequent keywords and the locations and the dates. Uh, in this way, you're uh, coming, with, uh, coming up with the description for event from the collection perspective. Uh, another. Uh, uh, extension for uh, or another way for doing that is the sentence level approach. You get all the sentences in the documents and get a, set, a bag of sentences from the whole collection and then try to come up with the event description for the sentence level and this will get more accurate uh, the details about the event and this is what I, I did. So basically you come up with the frequent words from the whole the collection and then tokenize the text into sentences and filter the sentences with the ones that have two or more frequent words. And these candidate sentences, you extract the location and dates from this. So you are trying to come up with the keywords or the, uh, the specific aspects of an event from the, the parts for, of the document that's relevant for the event. Because most of the web pages has uh, ads, navigations, and the footer and the headers. And we don't want to get information from this. We just want the main article of the web page. We just need the information from this part. So this is a way to get rid of the noisy parts of the web page and extract the event information from the main article only. So and this diagram shows the process: the text extraction, sentence recognition, and using the frequent words to uh, filter the sentences and then do the name recognition to come up with the different event aspects and then I can get them to come up with the, the just one record for the topics, locations, and the dates. I did that uh, in Ebola uh, collection, just a, a sample of 22 documents, and then get the top frequent words. And so on the left, these are the top 10 different frequent words from the 22 collections. And these are the top uh, sentences that have seven keywords out of the 10. And these are the locations and the dates. Uh, so you can see that it can come up with uh, the uh, very accurate uh, information about the event itself. So I, 
a build set in both type in this URL and I was using Python for the back end and uh, uh, JavaScript and Dojo for the front end. It just uh, it has a very uh, four events only and I can ex uh, in the process of extending that so the users can uh, input their collections to be analyzed but just using existing collections for now. And these are the sample uh, screenshots from them. So, uh, the existing collections are Burkina Faso, uh, Unrest, and the whole outbreak, Nigeria school bombing, and New York building collapse. And these are the different aspects, the frequent words, and the important sentences, and then as a sanity checking for the LDA topics, running LDA on the collection, and to compare what are the different uh, topics in the collection and uh, the event description that you show. So LDA is just a machine learning approach to come up with the probabilistic way for uh, the topics in the collection. Uh, and these are the important sentences based on the frequent keywords, and these are the last one, the, the LDA topics. So we have the event model and we have test uh, see the, how it uh, can get the specific information about the event. So the folk scholar, the traditional one, uh, just doesn't have this uh, box. So basically this is uh, fetching the URLs from the queue, downloading the URL, get the web page, and then extract the URLs from the web page, and then put them in the queue, and so on. So this is just a normal web crawler. The focus decoder, you don't put the URL in the queue unless they are relevant to your topic. So you have to come up with uh, a measure to measure the relevance of the URL and the web page it belongs to, to your topic. And then I extended that instead of a topic, you have to come up with an event model. So taking the seed web page in the initial step, you analyze them and get uh, a representation for your event. Instead of the topic, it will be a representation for your event. And then you use that for relevance estimation of the URLs unit calling. Uh, so I have implemented that and tested on sample collections and uh, I compared it again against the focus to caller without event modeling and uh, it showed uh, good results but I haven't added it here that I can show you. So why is this the benefit for web uh, archiving? So you have different use cases. Uh, if someone needs to archive an event, the folk scholar can come up with a, a high relevant or high quality CD of URLs that you can archive it whatever way using archive it or heretrix or whatever way that you want to archive it. The other way is if you already have a collection but small one and you think this is a high quality one and you need to extend it, so you can feed it to the folk scholar and he will extract the event model from the collection and then grab more web pages that are relevant to the collection that you have. And the, using the event model, you can, if you already have an existing collection, you can analyze it and summarize it and uh, see the different aspects of the event in the collection. So we have different ways of using the event model and the folk scholar in the web archiving uh, world. And that's it. Thank you. So, when you're automatically preparing these collections, how do you assess recall in the sense of how big is my collection? When, when it's being done manually, I, you can assume the expert has some sense of, I got enough and it's representative, but when you're doing it automatically, how do you know when to quit? <coughs> I don't know about the manual, but uh, since, for example, the, uh, the plan crash here is your plan crash, uh, since I'm calling on the live web, uh, I don't know how many web pages are there. So in the folk scholar literature, there is no uh, measure for getting the recall. That's why they concentrate on the harvest ratio of the position. So how many from what you get are actually relevant. Uh, since we can't get all the web, so you, can, you don't have a, an extension for or any mean for recall. Uh, I talked with Jimmy Lin, and uh, he had an idea. Uh, you can use the social media to get all the tweets and extract the URLs from them. And then from these URLs, 
uh, do just bit first, bit first calling, just all, grab all the uh, the links from the fair. This year is download them, get the links from the web page that it belongs to. So try to come up with uh, a huge set of web pages, and with 90%, this can get all the web pages that are about this event. So you can use this collection to uh, to measure the recall. So how much from this collection you Fox Color got? But this is not this is an approximate solution. And he, as he said, this is uh, an idea that he the common crawl or the common web. Uh, yeah, that seems like a, I mean, it would work. That seems like a heavyweight solution, right? Yeah. First, crawl a couple million things, yes. and then compare it to see if your smaller crawl got, yeah. uh, like, can I do it without crawling a few million things? <laughs> no, for, uh, from what I have, the, the recall, just the Fox Scholar community tries to get away from well, it. Well, it's maybe not even recall, right? It's somehow yeah. that, you know, detecting repetition or something. Do I need every variation on a new story? something like that, right? And, you know, something between, I mean, clearly measure precision and recall is probably not even desirable, mm -hmm. but is there some sweet spot in the middle where it's enough? The way I approached it is uh, uh, trying to uh, to measure the, if there is a bias bias in your collection. So are you all the web pages, news web pages? Do you need more social media and formal organizational web pages? Uh, all the web pages from CNN only? So, uh, I came up with the source importance, so how important are the sources in your, I mean by source, the, same, the, the mean domain, mm -hmm. so uh, is, uh, is it better to get uh, more uh, sources in your collection, so to get uh, more coverage and to get more recall, so uh, this is the way, but this is not for sure formal uh, approximation for the recall, but this is how I approach it. And when I talk to digital humanities people, uh, they said, for them, get me all, yeah, don't prune or don't uh, get rid of anything, just get me all and I will decide later. So they try to, to come up with everything, so they, uh, they don't like to lose anything. So, so Which just strikes me in news, you could spend all your time gathering highly duplicative sources and, and sort of tuning for um, similarity instead of uh, novelty or diversity mm -hmm. and you expend all your resources going in one direction yeah. while at the same time missing uh, perhaps different threads um, and I guess maybe this starts to get out of scope of what you're doing but I just wondered if in the process of what you're doing if you ran across these issues yeah and then related to that I think so I mean topics evolve over time right but if you try so the Air Asia might be easier because you have a flight number which is pretty precise and an LA number which, or a name rather that's pretty precise too. But other than that, topics may evolve and since your topic modeling is based on the seat you arise which seems to be static in this case, maybe you have to retrain your topic modeling in order to keep up with the evolving topics. Yeah. But the notion of precision there. Right. Yeah. You know, so for example, this shooting in Charleston, you know, their sort of initial uh, reporting of events, and now it's morphed into discussion of the flags and yeah. all yeah, the yeah, other yeah, yeah. Well, the name uh, is and, published also. And it, I think yeah. if you went purely automated, you might miss the yeah. tail yeah. end yeah. of, because it's separated by time, and the terminology becomes very different, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it might, might not be clear that mm -hmm. we're still talking about so at some level yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Right, very cool. Thanks a lot. Yeah. So for the sake of time.